I don't like me. Uh -huh. So I can't even like that you like me. Because you don't have good taste, so I can't respect you. Whew. Listen, it's the message right here. Black boy, tell me how you really feel. Because I just want to build with you. Black girl, tell me how you really feel. I want to keep it real with you. I want to live better, eat better. I want to love better, sleep better. Yeah. I wanna... It was interesting. I was recently having a, a group discussion with people, and the, a question that I got asked it was like a never have I ever game. And this girl said, Never have I ever been with someone who satisfied me emotionally, mentally, physically. No women in the room were able to say that they had all three, right? Which is crazy. And so there's a disconnect there. And there are people in the room who had kids, you know, some people who were previously married. So it, that speaks volumes to there's a, a disconnect somewhere with why we're picking the people that we're having sex with. Hold up. Wait a minute. Hindsight is 2020, though. Okay. So maybe at the time, he was satisfying her emotionally, physically, and sexually. Now, in hindsight, she might look back and say, actually, I wasn't satisfied emotionally because she's in a different place now. Right. So I think, I, think, I think that's difficult, but generally, I do think gaining sexual access to the average woman mm -hmm. is a feat. Right. Because what I just described with the woman who looks really good, but she opens her mouth and is dirty or she doesn't talk well and things like that. Um, after maturing and being able to distinguish those two type of women, women do that naturally. Mm -hmm. I've seen women talk about like, yeah, the dude was handsome and shit like that, but he didn't have no bass in his voice. <laughs> Done. Mm -hmm. Like women are naturally like you're going to naturally discriminate. Yeah. And it, it, it makes sense. So even if in hindsight, he really didn't check those boxes at the time he did. Right. Based on your level of perception and your level of self-awareness, he did. He did. He was, he was, he was the fact that he was tall was enough. Mm -hmm. The fact that he was charismatic was enough. And in some way you connected that to longevity without being able to extrapolate, okay, is this personality type going to be a good personality type long term? So I would, I would, if I was in that group, I'd push back and be like, nah, y'all were satisfied. It's just now looking back, you realize that something was lacking. But at the time, yeah, he was the best thing ever happened to him. Because why else would you have granted him access outside of filling a void, like you said? Yeah, but that, that's the thing that I'm saying. And I, I'm not saying that all women are these broken things, right? But I think that a lot of women nowadays are trying to fill a void. And so I don't know. I don't know. I'm just kind of thinking back to my past situations. I can only speak for myself. No, I can't even say like if I were in that moment looking back, then I don't think that they, I could say they feel they checked my boxes at that time. I knew something was off. But the fact that you have a void there, you just kind of accept what you're given, I would say. You know what I'm saying? Because it's like this person might not be what I know I need or what I know I deserve, but I feel so empty by myself that I'll take it. And I think that is what the reality is for a lot of women. I see your point. Yeah, I see your point. And, and that's, I think that's what's complex because can you deserve something you can't articulate? Mm. You know, like even, even nowadays, you'll hear a lot of women say, you know, like the Mama D song, I deserve, <laughs> you know, and it's like... <laughs> Yes. It's like, yes, as a human being, you deserve to be loved. But if you can't love yourself, you can't yeah. expect that. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I think a lot of times these days we're putting the car before the horse mm -hmm. and, and putting our happiness in other people's hands, our fulfillment in other people's hands. And I think that's what leads to the filling the void. But at that time, what I've seen happen as well is. If that woman was to meet a guy who checked all those three boxes, you would have run his ass off. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 
And sometimes, in hindsight, justify it and say that he didn't check one of those boxes. Mm -hmm. Just cognitive dissonance, too. Yeah. You know, make it okay that I wasn't able to even be receptive mm -hmm. to him fulfilling me in all these three ways. Absolutely. And I think subconsciously, a lot of women get triggered when they do meet a good guy who checks those boxes because they feel like they're inadequate for him. Mm. But it's easier for me to say, again, to protect my ego that it was you versus it really being me. I've actually had that happen on the on the show. Oh, really? Uh, yeah. A young lady, she yeah. was talking about how, um, you know, with the with the shitty dude, I kind of know what to expect. You know what I'm saying? I know that he ain't going to be shitty. He's going to leave me out there. And I, I feel in control. But with the good dude, if he disappoints me, then maybe I have to look at myself. And I'm not willing to do that. Mm-hmm. Most people can't sit still. Like that's why, and, and that's that's one of the you know things I talk about sometimes. A lot of people who feel the need to always be outside, always be doing something, a lot of times they're running away from themselves. Mm -hmm. They don't want to sit still and actually have to look at themselves. So they fill the void with people and experiences and on a yacht in Dubai and a thong. You know, because I don't like me. Mm -hmm. So I can't even like that you like me. Because you don't have good taste, so I can't respect you. Whew. Yeah. It's so it's so fuck especially in our community. Mm -hmm. It is so fucked up cuz then we disincentivize men from being good. Mhm. Mm I think it kind of boils back to this thing where we talk a lot about good guys, right? And the guys who are like, oh, I'm good, but I never get anything in return. Right, 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 right. It's just like, are you good if you being a good person is conditional based on what you get back from other people? And I just think that's like an internal reflection for yourself. So I can be a good person and then I become jaded because I've been good to 10 people and none of those people appreciated it. Or I could remain solid and say, no, I'm good. It's just those people, they didn't appreciate it, but I know I'm going to come across somebody else. And I think we're kind of steering over in this direction over here instead of going into the, the more positive direction. I've been telling, you know, men that, for instance, like a lot of us, especially like in college, the only time we would clean up is when a woman was coming over. So then you have to ask yourself the question, is your apartment clean because you might get some pussy? Or is your apartment clean because you think better? Mm -hmm. Because you like to maintain a, you know, a clean, spacious area. One of those things is sustainable. The other is not. Because what happens after you smash? Mm -hmm. And she's just another girl that you, you know, have sex with from time to time. Then your apartment goes back to looking like a pigsty. Mm -hmm. Similarly for women, same thing. Are you soft as a means to an end? Or are you soft because I operate better like this? And it doesn't matter. What, what's that um, NDIRE song? If you ever left me, I wouldn't even be sad because there's a blessing in every lesson. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, a lot of us are just, we're not willing to take on the lifestyle and the responsibility of these things. We just want to do it just to get. And it never, it never works out. I'm saying this to myself too. No, no. Yeah. It never works out. Yeah. Oh, I think that's been the toughest lesson for me. Um, and it's why, why I disagree with the whole soft girl era. Because an era isn't permanent. It's a fixed period of time. Yeah, come on. And so I just don't resonate with that. But I think all of this just boils back to the work that we need to do when we're single. And I don't think people are doing the work. Um, <laughs> sleep around with other people, party, do all the things that you mentioned because you don't have to sit and have those moments with yourself to reflect on your experiences and do better. We're not doing that. And so going back to what we were saying about these platforms, I think they're speaking to the people who are in that space, right? So I'm not focusing on myself. I can finger point. I'm not doing that introspection. And so I resonate with these podcasts, these platforms that are divisive. And I love your platform. I think that you do a lot of great work, but the reality is that a lot of people probably don't see 
the benefit in that because they might not think it's as lucrative. They might not go viral, you know, (laughs) stuff like that. And so people just don't have pure intentions. And so false prophets, as I like to say, we're just following these people. And it's like the blind leading the blind. Absolutely. My only consolation is like, even though this isn't lucrative, it's sustainable. Mm -hmm. Like I can't, if I was to go the fresh and fit route or the just pearly things route, you you would get burned out very quickly. What's the just pearly things route? Um, Entertainment. Yeah, entertainment. He's doing it for entertainment. There's no, I'm trying to approach this North Star. It's just entertainment. But we eat that up. See, and that's the thing, like, I say this on my live streams. I'm not even upset with these people. I'm upset at the demand for it. Yeah. Like, I always see some comments under my videos. You need to be harsher with these women. Tell them the truth. And this is I'm like, I'm telling them the truth. You are. And I'm letting them tell themselves the truth. Because sometimes, you let people talk long enough, they'll realize, hey, yeah, right, this ain't, this ain't math, ain't math. Mm-hmm. You know, but again, I think... Even, you know, when I think about Kevin Samuels, um, the reality is we as a society should be ashamed of ourselves that he needed to become that to become relevant. Mm. If Kevin Samuels wasn't cuss- cussing women out, we wouldn't know his name. Exactly. That's the, and we have to, we have to deal with that, mm-hmm. you know, and we have to ask ourselves, where are the other Kevin Samuels who are, who do have the tone that we like? And who are approaching it the way that we would like it approached. Mm -hmm. And why aren't we, you know what I'm saying? Why aren't we patronizing them? Or is it patronizing? I was just getting mixed up. But yeah, that's the truth. It's an indictment on us. 